Welcome to yellowmotor.com. Uh, we're here at Dormy House in the Cotswolds talking with Peter Wright, the, uh, the Vehicle Engineering Director for the Range Rover line. Peter, good to meet you. You too. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the Range Rover PHEV. Why, uh, why now, uh, as a mid, during a mid, uh, mid-life facelift, to introduce uh, a plug-in hybrid? Why not wait until the, uh, the next generation comes along? Plug-in hybrids is very relevant to today. Uh, the main drive of the automotive industry is into sustainability. So we wanted to build, because we've had a, a HEV vehicle in the market now for a few years, we wanted to build on that with a plug-in hybrid. Uh, the plug-in hybrid allows you to get up to 31 miles of electric range. Uh, with the UK as it is at the moment, we can pull 50% of that electricity from renewables uh, and bring that to the customer. Okay. Well, I mean, in the Middle East, uh, it'll, the hybrid sector is, uh, is kind of uh, is limited with some of the, uh, the countries who will benefit from it. It'll be mainly the Levant, not so much the GCC. But uh, what I mean, has the car been uh, hot weather tested? I mean, does that is there any does that affect the range or the, uh, the efficiency of the hybrid system? Okay, the, the car's done over a million miles. We've 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 been in super hot. Um, we go out and we do hot testing, we do the sand dune. As we've talked about with the, uh, the plug-in hybrid, it's a Range Rover, number one, and it does all the things that a Range Rover will do, which is uh, hot temperature driving, sand driving, uh, and less relevant to your market, but equally important, because there's only one place that's coming from, yeah. unless you put on saves. So it's, it's, it's a balance, it's a, but the customer's got the choice. Right. Keep plugging in and do that stuff. Yeah, well, we know about the Ingenium engine, uh, you know, that's already been offered on other uh, JLR cars and, uh, and vehicles. Um, but with the, what other changes uh, are specific to the, uh, let's say, to the uh, PHEV uh, model? Okay, so we've, we've launched the plug-in hybrid uh, in a mid-cycle fresh of, of the whole Range Rover concept. So uh, the car, the interior is a lot more plush. Uh, we have what we call the executive seats uh, and you'll find that they're much much wider more comfortable uh, and particularly focusing on the rear driving experience uh, and, on, on a long wheelbase we've got extreme luxury in the back uh, we also now have a full five seater option with our executive seats as well so there's no compromise for having a business back at the back of the car uh, we've have a major changes in things like uh, the interior controls all the climate is now on a clever screen clever touch screen down there and you can also dial up your terrain response from there as well. You can dial up terrain response from the back seats? Oh no, no, sorry. Oh, yes. You can dial up terrain response yeah. from, from the front of the lower blade screen, as we call okay. it, which yeah. is this climate, and, and all those options are in there. So the car's had a major change. Externally, uh, we've also got a uh, new grille. Uh, new lights are very important. So we've gone pixel, matrix, uh, and laser headlights, which allow you to see at a long, long distance, and they come and on. The charging point is uh, okay. hidden by the grill. Our charging point is hidden by the grill. I think it's quite subtle. Yeah. Okay, that's just there. It's all tucked away very nicely and discreetly, uh, and that's also totally off-road capable. Uh, you, you've waded that today. You've got that that uh, charge port wet. Yeah. No effect. No effect. Absolutely, it's a yeah, Range Rover. Okay, yeah. With the with the water wading, it's up to nine hundred millimeters. Up to nine hundred millimeters, no no compromise. But you can, uh, you have to leave the combustion engine uh, yes. switched on. You should leave the combustion engine switched on because you keep the exhaust system clean. Was there no way that uh, you know the exhaust system could have been blocked off to to drive electric off road? Or, I mean, for for the small amount of times that people are liable to yeah. want to do that, uh, then it, it really doesn't doesn't warrant, warrant right. carrying the weight around. To to okay. to be clear. Um, the, uh, the other thing that you'll find is when pushing a large amount of water away, yeah. uh, you would need the combined strength of both the electric motor and the combustion engine to push you along. Well, to go back to one question, I, w I wanted to talk more about the, the off-road ability, but I was wondering with the, with the rear seats and the, uh, the luggage room on the standard wheelbase model, has the hybrid system, does that, uh, has that intruded on the cabin space or the, the boot space? It, it's not to be a little bit shallower than mm -hmm. the standard version, but it does, uh, does it intrude on the cabin room at all? So there is no change in the cabin room at all uh, for the, for the plug-in hybrid. Okay. Uh, you'll find that identical to all other vehicles in the range. Uh, there is a small uh, change to the boot space height just to lift above the, uh, the battery in the back of the car, but you'll find it's about 48 millimetres if you measure it, which is hardly noticeable. 
What about with the getting, a, let's say, longer range with the batteries? I mean, how could that have worked out? How much more space? Uh, what was the compromise to, uh, to arrive at uh, the 51 mile range for the... Uh, it's 51 kilometers or, 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 thir or 31 yeah, miles. miles. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a balance. Uh, we have to look at what the customer is going to do. We have to look at the technology that it is today. For the proposition that we wanted to put forward, which is to have a vehicle that you can drive for a reasonable amount of time because the majority of people who will buy this will have a commute or a journey to work perhaps yep. of less than 10 miles uh, and they can do that totally on electric uh, and they can go there and back and perhaps there's charging going to build at work and so for the first levels of customers we, we believe this was about the right level um, but clearly Jaguar Land Rover is committed to the future of electrification uh, by 2020, we'll offer electrification across every every car, is what Ralph Schwess, our uh, CEO, has said. Uh, and we don't talk about the future, but of course, there is more to come. Okay, uh, I wanted to ask about the uh, the off-road now, uh, some of the off-road capabilities. I know with the uh, electric motor sandwich between the gearbox and the uh, and the combustion engine, uh, yep. you were able to maintain the uh, the, the standard Range Rover's uh, drive line with the differentials, yes. low gear ratios. Uh, but since the electric motor is offering uh, torque at zero RPM, mm -hmm. what do you, would it, I mean, is it necessary to uh, retain the low gear ratios in that regard, or couldn't you have uh, eliminated that to cut weights if you can get uh, so much torque instantly? We, we still want this car to be able to do all the things that, that, it's, that it does in the rest of the, uh, in the range. Uh, to, to remove the low ratio uh, was, was not really an option uh, because we would lose a lot of that capability in sand and all the other uh, environments that we really want to make the car excel. And you're quite right, uh, the electric motor provides you that unique capability of zero RPM maximum torque and it's enhanced the capability in many areas that we find uh, compared with some of, some of the other engines in the range. Uh, really to make the, the off-road experience absolutely excellent. Okay. Some of the other changes we were talking about earlier, you were saying that the brakes have been uh, have been changed or have been altered uh, on the, the new yep. Range Rovers across the range. What's yep, we've introduced new new uh, brakes, uh, uh, brake pads and discs. Uh, that's to keep us up to date with the changing uh, technologies uh, and to uh, give the, make sure the customer experience is, is, is maximised because the braking system um, we have to be aware of, of changing environmental requirements. Now the, the braking system has met the latest environmental requirements uh, to put on us, uh, and quite rightly so. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Okay.